The Florida Panthers dominate the Columbus Blue Jackets and shut them out 4 0 in a game that was dominated from start to finish. The Panthers were able to roll all four, all four lines, get four different goal scores, and get their second straight shutout, eighth of the season. We're going to break this down more here on the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Your Locked On Panthers, your daily podcast on the Florida Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into this Friday, April 12th edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Thank you for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. I'm Ron Velez from the Hockey News. You can follow me on X at Man 12 Follow the show account on X and Instagram at LO underscore FLA Panthers. And shout out to the everydayers who come back here and get your daily Florida Panthers fix. Today's episode is brought to you by Indeed. Indeed knows when you're growing your own business, you have to make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. Visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. Terms and conditions apply. So Florida Panther fans, it's great for the Florida Panthers that now their game is really starting to get going. Like I said at the top, all four lines for the Panthers rolled on Thursday night as they welcome in a Columbus Blue Jackets team that, as we spoke about on Thursday's show, one that was pretty battered and bruised. And the Panthers, it was a a night of not messing around. And even though Jet Greaves made it a challenge for the Florida Panthers, uh, the, the Panthers just were consistently in the Columbus Blue Jackets zone. The Corsi 4 percentage was over uh, two-thirds for the Panthers, and they were still able to break through late into the second period and then really broke it open for the 4 nothing win for the Panthers. But it is a Friday, which means it is a Fairbanks Friday edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Nick Fairbanks is back here on the show. And Nick, not only welcome back to the show, but also tell everybody who who they're not – if they're not – watching on the youtube what you are wearing on uh, for tonight's post game show i am wearing a vintage not really uh phoenix coyotes jersey yeah and it's in solidarity with the phoenix coyote players that are kind of going through a rough time with all the news on twitter and everything and nothing's been set yet but just imagine that you know you're possibly being relocated in probably about a week unfortunately, just due to the circumstances between the organization and also the city of Scottsdale. Yeah. And uh, just when, when, when you look and let's relate this back to the Florida Panthers and just what they, what they've done here and just what happens when you build it, they they'll come and based on the Florida Panthers, just what they've done in these last few years. Now tonight's win for the Florida Panthers gets them to win number 50, the second time in franchise history. And with the Toronto Maple Leafs losing to the New Jersey Devils six to five, where where Jesper Bratt got a goal with one eighteen left, the magic number to clinch home ice is now at one for the Panthers. A combination of a point of Panthers gaining a point or the Leafs losing one, the Panthers will have home ice in round one. So for this one, the Panthers really, it was from like I said, start to finish, the Panthers were getting getting it into the zone, getting on their forecheck. The, the gap control for the Panthers really go when Columbus was entering the zone, getting in on the check, forcing them outside and, and breakouts were fairly quick, not afraid to chip uh, the puck up the zone. And even uh, through, through the, through the blue jackets off quite a bit that it was the same guy getting the puck when they chipped up their <laughs> own pucks uh, too. So it was just a lot quicker on their feet for, for the Panthers. And I mean, even though Matthew Kachuk scored with 30 um, with uh, 47 seconds in, the bottom six, they really were were just hungry and setting the tone. And even though, even though in in probably maybe if it's game number forty, you're not seeing extra long shifts, but you saw a reasonable night for them to take those extra long shifts because the lack of penalty time uh, for for this one, the 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 minutes were being were able to be distributed pretty damn well. Yeah, and you know. <clears throat> 
I want to kind of, you know, take us back a couple of weeks where Florida wasn't looking so hot. You know, everybody was thinking, you know, what, what's going on? This team, you know, is in disarray. Everything's – the whole world is falling apart. The sky's falling in. We just had to relax. You know, they're going to get it together. They weren't showing the effort. Well, I think over the last three or four games, they've showed the effort that is needed to win hockey games. And I know the Boston one is, uh, you know, unfortunate in overtime. But, listen, they know how to play. They're going to beat you not only with their forecheck, but they're going to beat you with their defense – and you can't say enough out of the last three or four games, three shutouts and one five-on-five five goal against. Team it knows what to do, and they know what it takes to win. Um, tonight was just, you know, you have to take control of, you know, a team that unfortunately for Columbus uh, has had a rough season uh, from beginning to now end, you know, with coaching issues um, and now player issues that they've had. And now it seems like president or ownership um, – possible issues there. Um, Florida Panthers as a team just needed to do what they do best and they showed it tonight and it was for a full 60 minutes, which is nice to see. Yeah. And you think about where, where the Panthers, how they got their goals. I mean, and, and, and on those, you're seeing multiple guys touching the puck in the first one, Sam Bennett with a brilliant back check and then and then quickly getting it up the ice where Matthew Kachuk scores from distance, the one that maybe Greaves should have saved. But really, in between that and the second goal uh, for, for the Panthers, I mean, Greaves was giving the Panthers a really hard time where the Panthers were just getting out in front of the net, uh, screening him too, and he was and his vision was really great through those screens too. I mean, but also think about in the, in the second one where Erod chips it up and then gets a lays lays a check there so that he mm-hmm. could get the puck back and then a little give and go which I don't know if Lundell was trying to do a cross crease pass uh, through the through the goal mouth or if it was shooting but still either way Erod was still able to convert it uh, there Sam Reinhardt gets goal number fifty four on the night still a, a historic season for him uh, too mm-hmm. as uh, as a uh, Vladimir Tarasenko gets the screen out in front and then Vladdy um, one one out in front in, in the in the third period where where forced the Columbus Blue Jackets to cough up the puck. I mean, and it really was just in your face uh, for for um, in, in the Columbus Blue Jackets, not giving them space to Sergey Bobrovsky when he was re- that wasn't really tested on the night, but still very 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 stood tall in in his crease too. And I mean, for the for 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 Florida, I mean, this is this is what you all all you can ask for. I mean, thank goodness I did that show on uh, the other week about about the Panthers and just all about how the last 10 Stanley cup champions have finished, even though it doesn't necessarily, even though we still can't predict with the, for the Panthers, mm-hmm. you, you see the different trends of finishing strong, not necessarily in wins, but just ha- habitually for them. And it's, it's been showing and now you're seeing the results in wins. Yeah. And you know, you don't, Florida had no choice last year, but to, play as hard as they could and try to win every single game that they could because if they didn't, they wouldn't have made it. Now they're in their own driver's seat, so to say, and they can dictate what they want to. They can take games off. They can take a couple of games off or a couple of weeks off if they choose to, just to make sure that number one, they're healthy. And number two, that, you know, they're well rested for when the playoffs do start. Um, but, you know, I want to kind of add on to, you know, the show and the um, what you talked about with, you know, the last couple of Stanley Cup champions and, you know, how they finished the season. You know, I always look back to Tampa Bay when they won their back-to-back. They didn't finish that strong. You know, they um, they went maybe like three and seven or maybe 500. It doesn't really matter once you're at the end of the season, as long as your team is ready and they know what exactly they're doing. Um, you know, one other example I'll give you is I think Florida literally trashed the uh, Lightning, and I think it was either – what was it? The, they it was the last the few first, games of the regular season. In last two games. Of, yeah. They totally trashed them. And then what happened? It, it That doesn't matter. Playoffs are a new season. Everything can restart. But as long as you have the habits, you have the behaviors, and you have the DNA and your team identity still intact by the time game 83 hits, you're in good hands. Do you remember what happened during those uh, last two games too in 2021? That's when the nickname Fat Pat started uh, too. 
when when Montour started saying that uh, with uh, Pat Maroon. That's that's what I remember from that ending in the regular season uh, too. But uh, yeah, but uh, that, that'll give us a, that gives us a good opportunity to transition over to segment number two. We're going to discuss more about the three stars of the game and when we thought this game was won or lost. We're going to discuss that and more here on Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Policy Genius. And Policy Genius is the country's leading online insurance marketplace. It saves you time and money so you can provide your family with a financial safety net starting today. Policy Genius helps you compare your options from top companies and their team of licensed experts is on hand to help you talk through it. Talk to a team award-winning agent who will help walk you through the process step-by-step. Your work life insurance policy may not offer protection for your family's needs. Even worse, it may not come with you if you leave your job. They have no incentive to recommend one insurer over another so you can trust their guidance. Check life insurance off your to-do list in no time with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash LockedOnNHL or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash LockedOnNHL. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you the can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Back on this Friday, April 12th edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Thank you once again for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day here on a Friday, a Fairbanks Friday edition of the show. So, uh, Nick, three stars of the game for me are Sergey Bobrovsky, Evan Rodriguez, and Oliver Ekman Larson will be the third one because he got two points on the night, but I got to give some unsung heroes on the day. Uh I, I also got to mention two people, Kevin Stenlin and Stephen Lawrence. My goodness, such great games from them. The Kevin Stenlin consistently intercepting passes and, and still getting the puck deep in their zone. Stephen Lawrence battling it out, winning a whole bunch of board battles, and then getting quickly getting the puck low to high. The zero points and one shot on goal does not tell the whole story of Kevin Stenlin's game. Um, Scott, sorry, Stephen Lawrence's game, uh, excuse me, about how he performed on the night. And this is a guy who's not an everyday guy. So opportunities like this are really, really, for, for me, a, a really great opportunity for if he does come into the lineup. It's a, it's a big confidence boost. But, uh, man, what just up and down, no passengers for the Panthers as far as that. And uh, for you? Who are your three stars on the night? We uh, go with Bobby, the goalie, number one. Mm-hmm. The guy's been stellar, two back-to-back shutouts. And then number two, I am going to go with Oliver ekman Larson just because of what a few days off did for him and how well he played after that. Uh, you know, maybe we sit him maybe another game just to really make sure that he's good to go, um, make sure he's healthy, just because he, he's going to be that important during the playoffs. And – Unfortunately, he had probably his worst game as a Panther um, against the Bruins last weekend. So, And then the third star, I'm kind of wavering on this one because I want to give it to Rodriguez, but I honestly don't think he would have scored that goal unless Lundell did pass it back to him. Um, but uh, honestly, he, was, he was forcing a lot of shots on goal. He was getting in front, forcing to play. You know, you know what? Hey, it's, you your, made, it's, your you, star. it's your choice. but You made the case. Give him the third star. <laughs> He's good. No, he was creating a lot of havoc and everything. It just, you know, along me with a lot of other Panther fans, just wish uh, the finishing touch was there just a little bit more this season, just because I think if he did, I think the third line would be lethal. And on top of that, I think he'd be more of a force to be reckoned with. Oh, yeah. Thankfully, um, Erod can you can plug him on anywhere in the top nine. And he's uh, he's going to he's not necessarily getting the four point games like he was in the in the beginning of the season, but mm-hmm. as far as reliability and all and, and using his speed, very valuable for what, what he, what he brings to the table also spoke about post game about 
about not getting too cute with the puck and also talk spoke about Lundell's um progress and just because three 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 goals in the last five games um after tonight and spoke about how uh letting the game come to him and then when about holding the stick tight and that's when the game comes at you at waves uh too which by the way we saw a big uh the, the Emirate Bank Arena crowd uh really the wave was very noticeable at least on the television and the towels uh too for 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 the Panthers speaking of those waves so Love what Evan Rodriguez had to say post game, but just about Anton Lundell's development and just how his game is coming at at the right time for 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 him too. Uh, my moment when I thought this game was won, it's funny because I tweeted that I tweeted at eight fourteen saying, "The moment the Panthers get a two goal lead is going to be my moment when I thought this game was won or lost." But wait a minute, wouldn't? But looking back at that, wouldn't that tweet? itself say that that was the moment because the Panthers were just the, the, the zone time after, after two periods was like nine minutes to five uh, or after the first period, one of the two was nine, nine minutes to five finished the game with two thirds of the Corsi four, just Bobrovsky was uh, protected and just never, never in my mind did I think that the Panthers were going to let up uh, against the, against the Columbus blue jackets in this one. So my moment when I thought this game was won or lost was not necessarily a moment specifically, but a time during the night, 8.14 p.m. when I thought the, the game, when I when I made that tweet. And then at 8.30 was when Evan Rodriguez scored that goal to make it a two-goal lead. So it was a 16-minute gap between that tweet and the time that the goal happened. So a different uh, different one for, for me on the night. <laughs> How about yours? Uh, definitely the Rodriguez goal, just because you've seen it before. Florida will just completely take over the game. Uh, they will completely dominate. And what happens? Fluke goal or fluke bounce goes in off, you know, off of Bob or Stolarz or something like that. And then all of a sudden we're we're in a different type of game. You know, the Florida is going to start. You know, I don't want to say panicking, but you know, it, it's just you know, it's a different type of game when you're dominating and the other team just put something on that and it goes in. So I was waiting for that, to be honest, but I'm so glad that, you know, they were able to get the, uh, you know, Rodriguez was able to get a stick on the puck and put it in. But after that, I think it was a uh, smooth sailing. Yeah. Uh, going back to Oliver Ekman Larson, uh, you spoke about how rest, what rest can do for him. Uh, really, there was only a middling part of the second period where the, the Columbus Blue Jackets were starting to get their opportunities and, uh, and, after Nick Cousins fumbled the puck, and then uh, Bobrovsky being on top of his crease, just be just hold, holding holding it down. So mm -hmm. you talk about those moments in relation to dominating the dominating the play, but still ma ma making the proper proper saves. But at times we've seen the flute goal. But all Reckman Larson, I mean, there was one shorthanded chance where where it was odd man for the Columbus Blue Jackets, and then at ease he just pokes the puck out of the stick. Uh, to to get out of the zone, and then the Panthers go back to counter on the power play. They didn't necessarily score, which we speak about the Panthers and them being in the bottom third in five on five scoring. They get four on the night, which which when you're heading into the playoffs, you want to feel good about what you can do. And one five on five goal, like you said, in the last mm -hmm. four games. I mean, not a lot of penalties get called um, during during the postseason. So this is this is uh, definitely a confidence boost. Uh, the fact that Etu, Erod, and Lundell have now been, have had a few weeks together, and both of them, the broadcast mentioned this specifically, them them each have have uh, them having twelve goals. You're, it get, hopefully, it's not too top heavy reliant for the Panthers when they do get that because they also mentioned in the Bruins series when that third line was start starting to get put together, they had no answers as far as that. Yeah, Reinhardt was on there uh, last year. Who you face mo mostly? Who a top line player was facing third line guys on that one, but still, big opportunities, and you don't even have Verhage back yet on your forward on your forward lines, and that's the great thing about this. It is, and you know, it kind of begs the question: what um, Paul Maurice is going to do uh, for Game One of the playoffs? Because that's when Verhage and Aaron Eckblad are expected to be back. So, do you keep Reinhardt on the top line with Tarasenko? And then move Verhage down with Chuck and, or sorry, Kutchuk and uh, <laughs> and uh, Bennett, 
or do you do what he did last season where you put Nick Cousins there? And that was a very good line, and he's kept that line together for the last couple of weeks. So I don't know. I don't know what you do there. If you, because then if you do the top three of Barkoff, um, Tarasenko, and Verhage, and then you have Cousins, Bennett, and Kachuk, where, where's Rodriguez going to go? I mean, because Reinhardt's going to be on the third line with Lusto and Lundy. And, and then. I- I wouldn't take Erod out of the top nine neither. Like I, I don't, I just don't think he could generate play as much with the fourth line as he does, as he would in the top nine. Actually, let's continue that conversation also in the in the in the in the third segment. Of, let, let's discuss that more <laughs> uh, and go deeper in into that because Paul Maurice did actually talk about uh, that more in the in the post game presser. So we're let's let's uh, let's transition over to segment number three. We'll discuss more about that. So keep it here on the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Indeed. And when you're drafting your fantasy team, do you ever wish you could handpick the best stars for your business team? If you're building your talent roster, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills, when you can do it all with Indeed. Hate waiting? U.S. data shows over 80% of Indeed employers find quality candidates whose resume on Indeed matches their job description the moment they sponsor a job. Indeed does the hard work for you. Sponsor a job and we'll match you with the quality candidates whose resume on Indeed fit your job description. When you right when you post, but indeed you can start hiring fast. Indeed knows when you're growing your own business, you have to make every dollar count. Visit indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. Go to indeed.com slash locked on. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire? You need indeed. Also, this episode is brought to you by Factor. Eat stress-free with this spring with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. Choose from a weekly menu of 35 options, including popular options like Calorie Smart, Keto, Protein, Plus, or Vegan and Veggie. Also, discover more than 60 add-ons every week like breakfast, on-the-go lunch, snacks, and beverages to help you stay fueled and feel good all day long. What are you waiting for? Get started today and fuel up your springtime goals head to factormeals.com slash locked on and use code locked on angel 50 to get 50 percent off your first box plus 20 percent off your next box that's code locked on hl 50 at factormeals.com slash locked on 50 nhl 50 to get 50 percent off your first box plus 20 percent off your next box while your subscription is active Segment number three here on this Friday, April 12th edition of the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast. Thank you once again for making the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day here on a Friday. Nick, I assume you looked at one of the YouTube comments about your pronunciation of Kachuk. So it <laughs> looks like uh, you you fixed it there. That's what, that. If you're wondering why, we had a little bit of a chuckle there. <laughs> but uh, We do read the comments, so thank you for the uh, clarification. I, I actually, you know, I'm very good with languages and everything. I don't know why I thought the T was pronounced and everything, but thank you for the save there. So, Kachuk from here on forward. <laughs> yes. Uh, but uh, go, going back to uh, the whole playoff lines for the Panthers. Also, speaking of uh, that, too, I have a little bit of something in my no- By the way, before we actually continue, uh, Jack Devine and the University of Denver are going to the f- um, final of the Frozen Four Saturday at 6 p.m. Uh, so congratulations uh, to him too. And also, I do want to apologize to the audience because I do have a duty to, as as a host to also give you programming information on the Panthers. And I know there has been issues with Bally lately, as far as Marlins, Heat, and the Panthers um, playing at the same time. I apologize if I have not given you guys the program, the proper programming, as I'm also get the emails too. Saturday's game will be on Bally Sports Sun for those wondering. So getting that out there. Uh, already so we'll update you guys with information as as far as every every game coming coming into the the rest of the way with all three teams if especially if all three teams are in action but Paul Murray spoke uh, to the media talking about his playoff lines 
be, uh, being around 95% set. Here's the thing, Nick. We know what the deep pairs look like. It, it, even going back to last year, if you just know Paul Maurice's habits about who he likes, who he doesn't like, he doesn't like messing with deep. That he mm-hmm. That's just something that we've seen. Uh, the fan base, the Kulikov could have another pizza, and you still probably won't see – uh, Paul Marie's, uh, Paul Marie's scratch him more, more, more likely than not. We're, we're not going to see that. But the real question is the, the, the fourth line wings with Kevin Stenlin, really, you could, you, you we spoke about how great Lawrence's game was uh, on the night. Then you have mm-hmm. veteran like Kyle Pozo, which I like to call him Kyle Ocho. If you know, you know, but, uh, but also Yona Gajevich, who's, who's a grinder who could put, put, who could deliver a hard hit and also, uh, muck it up with someone too. I mean, there, there's just uh for for the Panthers. I mean, he also spoke about how the fourth and fifth line for for them not much of a difference as far as talent level. So it's really about some good internal competition from here on out. And if the Panthers clinch home ice, like we said, one point remains. We, game 82 will be all about the the final touches on 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 who's going to get those last two spots for the for the for game one of the postseason and yeah it's going to probably be interchange it's not going to be set in stone after game one neither which is great to have those options for the panthers and that's why bill zito made the signings he tr- he traded for lawrence not let's also not forget that signed a kevin stenlin someone that bill zito knew from columbus which by the way congratulate cong- congratulations to jeff rimmer on on a successful career part of the Mm -hmm. uh of the wall of fame up in the panthers press box but still options 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 nick that these that they have even for their fourth line options is definitely amazing to have it's quite amazing again to have somebody that can put them together in the right way and use them in the right way um you know i fully trust maurice is going to put together his lineup you say 95% mm-hmm. makes me think that there's only one piece missing, but also he has something in the back of his mind that if something's not working, he'll make that quick switch between games and make sure that that gets fixed pretty quickly. Whether that's a Lomberg, a Gadjevich, uh, you know, maybe, I don't know. I, I don't see any of the D pairs getting mixed up like you were saying, but you know, if cool cough, you know, decides to uh, give away $5 pizzas, you know, like Domino's or, um, uh, what's that place up in Detroit? Little Caesars does, you know, um, might have to make a change because then it could be costing them games that they can't afford to lose. But um, no, Saturday's game, uh, I think, is all about business. Um, you know, mm-hmm. he'll put his team out there that he wants to start game one. If they win that game, I think Tuesday's game against Toronto is going to be a formality, to be honest. Go in. Just be healthy, stay healthy. Um, Toronto may win that game, you know, with a you know field goal lead. That's fine. You already have the uh, second seed wrapped up, or maybe the first seed. Who knows? Who knows what Boston's going to do the last couple of games? But just make sure you take care of your business and everybody's healthy coming out. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Num- number one factor when it comes to that because you 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 don't want. <laughs> Which again, which is why it was so important for the Panthers to just get their lines rolling, and that the minutes were just so spread out on 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 the night too, uh, for the Panthers, and just let let less stress on the Barkoffs, the Reinhardts, and all that. Every all, every defenseman who's gonna um, who's gonna play some PK minutes too, and also the luxury of someone like if you put a Lawrence and a Ryan Lomberg, those are the guys who could definitely uh, eat up of a few penalty minutes too. Um, um with 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 the Panthers too and get, and get that PK time too for for them so it's it's just a great great luxury of of whether whether one guy goes or one guy doesn't for for mm-hmm. for the Cats too and crazy is uh the Panthers by the time the Boston Bruins take the ice again they'll already have to play the Bruins will have their two games in hand based on the start time because the Panthers play at 5 the Bruins play at 8 on the road in Pittsburgh too. So we'll, we'll be once that, once that game ends for, for the Panthers, honestly, grab your popcorn because the Leafs will be playing shortly after against the Red Wings on hockey night in Canada. And then, uh, and then, and then the Bruins take the ice too. So it's going to, we're going to 
things are going to be figured out even after the Panthers uh, Sabres mm-hmm. go final. Hopefully it's coming out with at least a point so that, that the Panthers are not risking it. But also the, the Bruins, they'll be on the front end of a back-to-back on Monday in Washington uh, too. So both of them are road games uh, for, for the Bruins. But it's crazy. The, the, mindset, the mindset that I go into this is like, yes, you know Toronto, you match up better against them based on blue line, goaltending, which, God, that, that jersey – Toronto game was just some ugly hockey based on just the the amount of how the goalies were just underdressed and also there was a point where New Jersey was getting four goal got four goals on 13 shots but my goodness that that was hard to watch but there's also a part of me that is like you got to exercise your demons against the Tampa Bay Lightning and you yep. and you you got to find a way to just say hey it's it's if you want to beat the best, be the best. You got to beat the best. I mean, we we've said this so many times. Ovechkin had to get over Crosby, and yep. look what happened when he did. The uh, I don't think. And 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 here's the thing: Tampa Bay is not going to have Sergachev, um, no. more than likely. It, the only way he would return, what the, from what we've heard, is if they make it to the conference final. That's the earliest. So, but if you get him in the second round. And, and Florida advances, that's a hot Tampa Bay team with momentum going into the second round too. Mm-hmm. So some way, somehow, it's it's not for me. It's a I. And if you're asking me who I'd rather play, I don't care. I I really don't. It's a matter of of you got to get through. But I know I can't deny what the better matchup is. I I just can't. I'm not going to be blindly say, oh yeah. Um, they're they're just gonna go into um, in into Tampa just because they've had a rough start. Vasilevsky had an under nine hundred save percentage at one point. No 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 no. <laughs> no. That is not that is not the mindset I want to go into in a, in a series like that. No way. Well, no. Look at the game that Florida just had against Tampa and what Vasilevsky did. Mm-hmm. Florida should have won that game, but Vasilevsky turned into himself. You know, he he turned the back the clock, so he's still there. Kucherov is playing out of his mind. Uh, Stamkos is still putting the puck in the net. Hedman's playing a lot better. Uh, Braden Point still a threat. Hagel's coming into his own. There's just so many weapons you can talk about with Tampa. But as you said, Florida's going to have to exercise their demons. If they want to go to the Cup and win the Cup, it's going to have to go through Tampa, um, whether that's going to be the first round or second round. Um, and I'm glad you caught yourself as far as saying, you know, who I'd want. Because we all know what happened the last time his team said that they wanted another team. So we're not going to do that here. We're no. very grateful. No. We're very humble about what we have and where we are right now. And we know what's going to happen at game 83. Mm-hmm. So let's get to it, man. Let's. I'm ready. Like, you know what? Game's 81, 82. Eh, eh, let's get it over with. Let's, let's get to... 420 baby let's do this <laughs> the for for sure we i can't wait can't wait to get there and can't wait for just and the reason why I, all, I also want the panthers to start at home is because i want that buzz in south florida right away mm-hmm. it, I, after after seeing them wave the towels which the towels were handed out due to autism of acceptance night mm-hmm. just seeing that and wanting to be back and seeing that right away in a playoff atmosphere I want it. I, I, I want to see it so badly. And I want to see that building buzzing once again, because when I left, when I left game four of the Stanley cup final, even though it wasn't a loss that I'll never forget the vibe in that building. Never, never forget that. But Nick, I want to thank you so much for joining me on this edition of the lockdown Florida Panthers podcast, celebrating a four nothing win for the Florida Panthers. Now their magic number to clinch home ice is at one. And the Panthers playing their best hockey at the at the right time. Four game point streak for the Cats. Fifty wins for for them to um, second time in franchise history. Back to back shutouts and eight on the season. Amazing. <laughs> but tell everybody where they can follow you online. You guys can follow me on Twitter at Prudentia Zero. Can't wait to come back next week to see who we're playing and what the matchup looks like. So thank you again. Can't wait. Digging into the matchups uh, and all and advantages, disadvantages. It's going to be a fun Fairbanks Friday. Let's go, dude. Let's go. (laughs) I'm ready. 
See you next week, my friend. See you next week. And if you like what you're hearing, please subscribe to the podcast to be notified every single time the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast jumps into your podcast feed. Don't forget to also subscribe to the other shows on the Locked On NHL Network, including Locked On NHL, Locked On Fantasy Hockey with Flip Livingstone and Stu Roden, and Locked On NHL Prospects. Thank you once again for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. So I'm Armando Velez with Nick Fairbanks. And you've been listening to the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. We're to our team every day.